in the classroom, I'm a former state legislator on the Republican side of the aisle. Um, I agree with one statement that was made by a gentleman that there should be a fair and honest debate. It looks like the time's going to run out here. I can simply say if everybody else isn't given the opportunity, that virtually every major educational group in the state is against this bill. That virtually we have a whole host of business organizations in Iowa that are against this, this bill. And it does appear likely this, not, this bill is not going to leave this room by what's been said. I do want to say that a good and honest open debate. What was said by the gentleman before he went on his common core grantings was that we have to look at what this bill is. It's a direction on assessment. There's a separate subcommittee meeting later today on the core. So you, Representative Salmon, and we're appreciative of that, and all other legislators in the House, and virtually most of them in the Senate, supported an educational reform package last year built on consensus. And part of that was to put together an assessment task force. And I think if everybody in the room has their thoughts in the core, whether they're for or against it, they should be in favor of that fair and honest debate. The assessment task force was given a clear directive to look at the assessment of the state and to report back to the legislature on it. If the points that are being made are sincere and can be justified, that group of Iowans, not the three out-of-state folks we have here, but that group of Iowans who are appointed there will look at the situation and judge it fairly. But it's not a fair and open debate in this bill to say that they cannot study a subject, that they cannot look at a subject, that they cannot examine a subject. That is not a fair and open debate. That is a directive to a group of Iowans, a group of experts that the legislature appointed, put in position to give a diversity of opinion for both business and education in the general community. That was a directive. And you have told that group that they cannot study this issue. That's not a fair and open debate. It is not. You look at what was said earlier, I just have a couple of items I would want to respond to. Again, to the item of, of uh, breach of data. We have seen these emails going all over the place on this particular topic. Again, I simply say, and, and hi Shane, as you're taking, uh, please share one example in Iowa of a security breach of data by the Iowa Department of Education. Please share that real example. There's a lot of talk about, I've, I've heard about the NSA leaking information, some of the emails I've seen. I've heard about national items. I've not heard of one example of that. In terms of the, the test and its integrity, we know in real life that in Davenport that there was a cheating scandal because the tests, I will test now, are held by teachers in their classroom. I was a teacher, I had those materials in my classroom. There was nothing stopping me, I didn't do it. There's nothing stopping me from erasing the answers and putting in other answers. That was done in real life in Iowa. And we know that that cheating took place with the paper and pencil test. There's certainly the idea that there's a theory that there's a security breach that could be done by computer. But I can tell you that, again, going from horse and buggy, paper and pencil to a computerized test is right for security purposes because of that issue. And secondly, as a classroom teacher who administered this particular test, I can tell you that students are not as engaged in paper and pencil as they are computerized. Our district, for example, had the NWA as the alternate test, which is a computerized test. And you know what? The kids were much more engaged in that particular test than they were in the paper and pencil test. And I, I just simply hear the gentleman's talk about the Common Core expenses and granting his I believe he said that over a 17-year period in one of the emails sent off that there would be $184 million spent on standards, something of that neighborhood, over a 17-year period. If you looked at what's spent out in student aid to the districts of the state over the same period, at 0% allowable growth, which is not likely to occur, in the same time period, I was going to spend around $72 billion on that. So it's a tiny fraction, about 0.25% on standards <coughs> if we do not have this form of standards, that doesn't mean that expenses won't be spent on textbooks, on technology, professional development, doing local standards. There are costs to that, and local districts will have to bear the brunt of those expenses as opposed to the state. There are many other items I could go on, in, but I simply believe that on this particular item, great respect for Representative Salmon on so many issues we work together on, but this one I will have to respectfully agree to disagree and believe that if we do want a fair and honest debate, 
You should not rip this away from the assessment task force. You should let them study it. And if these Iowans believe that it's not the right thing for Iowa, then they will report that back to us. 